How to stay in Europe after a 14-hour flight? The answer is to go to Reunion. A remote Indian Ocean island Reunion is a French overseas territory located between Madagascar and Mauritius. The total area of the island is 2,512 square kilometers, with a population of 866,506 people. Approximately a quarter of this population lives in the ethnically diverse capital of Saint-Denis. The island is home to one of the most active volcanoes in the world, the Pitondela de la Fornis, creating a unique landscape that is now a World Heritage Site. The combination of extreme weather, dense population and diverse landscape is an extremely challenging backdrop for building infrastructure. The original coastal road that connected the island's two main urban centers, Saint-Denis and La Possession, was located between the sea and a cliff face, making it prone to natural phenomena such as landslides, rain floods, and frequent high tides. All this contributed to the road, often becoming impassable and unused. This continued for about 64 days a year, with a direct impact on trade, which is 60% dependent on freight traffic along the littoral route, which is part of the road. Taking this into account, the authorities of Reunion intend to create a faster and safer coastal road to facilitate travel, providing infrastructure to reduce traffic congestion and enhance reliability, comfort, and safety for users. The estimated cost is 2 billion euros. The new coastal road spans a length of 12 and a half kilometers and located 80 to 300 meters from the coast to avoid natural disasters. The road consists of three main sections, including a 5.4-kilometer coastal viaduct and two causeways, an interchange in a causeway connecting Le Grand Chaloupe and La Possession. The 5.4-kilometer viaduct is the longest of its kind in France, with a width of approximately 30 meters. The deck will have a flexible dual configuration with three traffic lanes, accommodating a future lane designated for public transport. During a limited period of time for construction, it was necessary to deliver 19 million tons of soil for embankments. This had to be done on the island itself, posing one of the biggest challenges as the island's area is small, and finding these materials was not an easy task. The project also involves the world's largest offshore crane on a platform. This crane was designed and manufactured by Enerpac and is installed on a marine platform. Considering the complexity of the structure and its location, it was decided to manufacture the reinforced concrete elements of the construction on land to avoid the influence of tides and reduce work time on the water. Two production sites were created in the port area for the manufacture of finished piers and segments. The new production, large-scale works, and significant investments led to the creation of additional job opportunities. A total of 19,000 people are involved in the project, which positively impacted the island's economy. The island has a unique environment, where marine mammals and endangered bird species must be protected, and there is the Indian Ocean with its magnificent coral reefs. In other words, extreme caution is required. Placing the blocks that protect the waterfront from the sea is a very difficult task. The builders had to know where to place them. Since the water of the Indian Ocean is not always transparent, it was necessary to find the right location underwater. Drones were used to study the riverbed, and data from the drones was processed to produce a three-dimensional point cloud. An accurate digital terrain model created in Civil 3D helped in more precise designing of foundation supports, organizing water drainage and optimizing earthworks. Additionally, aerial photography was conducted during the construction process to monitor progress and track changes in the riverbed due to rainfall. During the construction of the marine highway on the new production sites, 1386 segments, each weighing 2.4 thousand tons, and 48 piers were manufactured. All components of the structure are transported to their locations by barges and installed using a launching beam measuring 278 meters in length and 16 giant tower cranes with lifting capacities ranging from 35 to 220 tons. Considering its exposed maritime location, the infrastructure is subjected to particularly harsh weather and marine conditions such as cyclones and tides, as well as sensitive and variable geotechnical conditions. Therefore, the assembly and protection of the road were a necessity. The viaduct is designed to last 100 years and withstands exceptional impacts, including collisions with maritime vessels. Importantly, the lower part of the deck is situated at a height of 13 to 22 meters above sea level, beyond the reach of the highest waves. The 3.6-kilometer road between La Grande Chaloupe and La Possession will consist of a dual carriageway with three lanes of traffic. The La Possession interchange is expected to form the other part of the new link road. The Topcon technology keeps the project on track, despite struggling with natural hazards, challenging landscapes, and stringent environmental requirements. From minimizing the number of dive teams to placing protection blocks on the embankment and taking advantage of the digital workplace, Topcon technology has helped improve productivity throughout the workflow, significantly reducing labor costs, materials, and project timelines. The new road will not only provide access and improve public safety, it will also reduce travel time between La Possession and Saint-Denis, providing the island with a fast, reliable, and modern connection for more than 80,000 travelers a day. 
However, there is one major problem. The construction of the new coastal road on the island is currently suspended. The cost of the project is escalating, and the National Financial Prosecutor's Office has already initiated an investigation. Republican D.D. Robert, the head of the island's regional council, had planned to complete the construction of the new road along the coast of Reunion Island within three years. Started in 2014, the construction has encountered numerous complications, and its cost has significantly exceeded the initial budget. We will have the most expensive road in the world, emphasizes member of the European Parliament Yunus Omarji. According to his information, the final cost of the highway will exceed 2 billion euros, initially estimated at 1.6 billion, making each of the 12.5 kilometers of the new highway cost more than 160 million. The additional funds will be used to resume construction of the remaining 2.7 kilometers. The region is faced with a significant challenge. At least 7 million tons of massive rocks are needed to complete the embankment. These rocks can be found on the island, but the quarries where they are extracted are subject to legal sanctions from local organizations and environmental associations. Various solutions are being considered to solve this problem. For instance, some entrepreneurs propose importing 3.5 million tons of rock from Mauritius Island, located 200 kilometers away from Reunion. However, this was not the only obstacle to the continuation of the colossal construction. A year after its initiation, in 2015, the National Financial Prosecutor's Office intervened. As part of the preliminary investigation into corruption, nepotism, and influence peddling and dealmaking, 11 searches were conducted, including at Didier Roberts' residence. The Council for Nature Conservation under the Ministry of Ecology issued a negative opinion regarding the feasibility of further project implementation, citing potential harm to populations of various animal species, including humpback whales, large dolphins, green turtles, seagulls, and others. We have always opposed this idea, which we consider insane from both an ecological and economic standpoint, summarizes Yunus Omarji. The decision to construct the road was originally driven by ideology. The left-wing opposition still believes that launching an urban railway would be the best solution to the island's main transportation problem, the proliferation of vehicles for which nothing is prepared. The implementation of the coastal road will enhance safety for travel across the island, but exacerbate the dominance of motor transport. According to him, numerous complications during the construction and its significant cost increase are causing a lot of hindrances. Now when we are trying to prevent the reduction of subsidies, it is not good for us at all, he believes. We should not forget that European funds have made a significant contribution to financing the project. So I'm really looking forward to the European Public Prosecutor's Office getting involved. We are currently unaware of the conclusions they have reached. Indeed, the European Investment Bank has issued a 500 million euros loan for the construction. So Didier Robert intended to build the road within three years. But now it is not excluded that the first cars will only pass through it in 2025. It should be noted that this project, prepared by the right wing, not only requires enormous investments, which greatly pleases major developers and transporters, but also delays the island's development for almost 15 years, with the new highway costing over 2 billion euros. However, its implementation will not bring Reunion any closer to solving the climate issues that have become relevant in the 2000s. Write in the comments what do you think about the prospects of this mega project. We will be interested to know your opinion. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also watch our previous videos. See you later.